two ways of discovering black holes. However, in order for these two ways of discovering them to work, the black hole needs to have a companion star at least somewhat close to it, okay? So these two ways to work, the black hole must have a close companion star. So the companion star goes around the black hole due to the gravity of the black hole. It's pretty easy to envision this. Basically what's happening here is that you look out in space and then you see this huge star. This huge star is doing this. You know, it's going like that. And then next to it you don't see anything. It's just black. Could a star just simply do that by itself? Something must be causing that, right? So you start doing your calculations, you find out there's next to it, there's got to be another star that's very, very heavy. It's a black hole. So basically, what's happening is the gravity of the black hole is causing the star to ro revolve around the black hole, you see? That's one way that we discover black holes. The companion star is going around it. So the first discovered black hole was in the constellation Cygnus. That was the first confirmed discovery. It was uh, called Cygnus X1. So basically you had this uh, companion star which is a all super giant, huge, huge, okay? And it was simply going around every 5.6 days, right? And then from there, we calculated that the black hole must have a mass of roughly 10 to 15 solar masses. We did our calculations. Even though we can't see it, it's black, we still can tell that it's there, okay? And we're able to do similar kind of calculations like this. You see here, Cygnus X1, location Cygnus, the companion star O, 5.6 days, 10 to 15 solar masses. So that means the O giant is going around every 5.6 days. Okay, next one, LMCX3, that's another black hole candidate. It's in the location Dorado. The companion star is B3, main sequence star. It's going around every 1.7 days. The black hole must have a mass 4 to 11 solar masses. And then another one is V616 Mon, V404 Cygni, J1655-40, QZ Vol. These are the locations. Uh, this is location. When they say location, they mean the constellation. Which constellation is it in? and then the companion star, and how many days it's taking to go around. This one is interesting. It takes eight hours for it to go around, and the black hole is five to 14 solar masses. By the way, these are all what are known as ordinary black holes. In the next lecture, we're gonna see that there is another kind of black hole known as supergiant black hole. They're at the centers of galaxies. They eat up all the stars that are in their vicinity. These are very light black holes, ordinary, okay? The other way of discovering black hole is to observe the X-ray emission. The accretion disk from the companion star emits X-rays when it's getting heated. So basically, similar concept to how a, a type one supernova happened. Remember the companion star fed the white dwarf and the white dwarf blew up? Here what's happening is you got a black hole and a companion the companion is feeding the black hole, and when this thing is getting, starting to twirl around, revolve around the event horizon, it's getting heated. It's emitting X-ray. Example of that, the X-ray emission known as SS433. So let me show you here the picture of this one. You see here, you have a companion star, feeds the white dwarf, and then that accretion disk starts building up. Accretion, uh, X-ray from accretion. So now it says here, 
Disc of spinning gas heated by frictional forces and emitting X-rays as the gas spirals into the black hole. So once the gas falls into the event horizon of the black hole, it cannot emit any more X-ray. We won't be able to see it. But before it falls into the event horizon, you see here, it's going in, going in. Uh, this black one is the event horizon, you see. It goes in, it goes in, spirals inward. As it becomes very hot, it's be looking red, you see. It gets hot, 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 and then emits X-ray. If we're lucky and the Earth is in the, and the, Earth is in the line of this X-ray, imagine this X-ray is coming. And if the Earth is in the direction of this X-ray, what's going to happen? We're going to see a star, and then next to it, we're going to be black. It's going to be completely black, and then energy is going to be coming from there. And we're going to be like, oh, there it is. There's a black hole next to it, next to that big star. It's emitting X-ray, you see? So that's how we discovered the black hole. So have we discovered these? Yes. That's why we're not just talking just from theory. We have discovered these. Another way of discovering a black hole is known as gravitational waves. There's a new uh, telescope named LIGO, L-I-G-O. Uh, they're trying to discover these things known as gravitational wave. How does this one work? It is supposed that when a heavy object is moving in space, it's supposed to cause ripples in space-time. It's going to cause ripples. And the ripples are going to come our way. Just like, let's say, a big ocean liner in an ocean, as the big ocean liner is moving, you know, a cruise ship, isn't it going to cause ripples in the water? And then if you're on the shore, you're going to see this ripple. So since a black hole is very, very dense, if it's moving in space, it should cause these ripples in space. So what we should observe is a gravitational wave. You see here? Like that. Like that. So we have to have an instrumentation to detect this very, very slight gravitational wave. It's got a, you're very unnoticeable. It's not like the Earth is going to do this, you know. You've got to have very fine instruments to detect this. And this instrument named LIGO, it's, uh, it's trying to detect this uh, uh, gravitational wave. We haven't done so yet, but we're, you know, we should be close to doing that.